artists need to pay attention. It's nothing personal. Some people take it personal. But really, when you look at Chris Brown, other people like that, Usher, you know, they use and they see the markets and they play the market. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. I actually had uh, uh, Bobo. Uh, I had uh, He's a Leo and you yeah. on here. Yeah. And I had said that Silk was hard and you said, yeah, Silk was hard. But a few people said, uh, you know, otherwise. And when I clipped it in, boy, listen, I had, because I wouldn't seen Silk right after. That. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to see this man. Yeah. But I said, man, I remember we were talking about that. Let me get that and pull that back in. Now, did you see the clip? No, I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> I put it back in there. Me and you, we was pretty much like, uh, you know, he, he had he had his moments. He, exactly. he got I mean, songs with Jay Z. Had to give him his flowers, man. He he did what he did. And Jay Z, he told me Jay Z gave him that verse for free too. Oh, that's dope. The one, but how is it though working with people and seeing the way that people charge each other? I know DeRoe just was on here, and he also said he's never paid for a feature with anyone. He just, if he did, if he needed it, he asked for it. Even with P Diddy, P Diddy never charged him for that that remix. Uh, Get big, he'd say nobody's ever charged him for a feature. No, I ain't never paid for a feature in my life. Wow, ever you in your life? Ever not one mm. time, and I never did features with any everybody in the industry. I ain't never paid for one. So that's really off respect. Like that's I, real if respect. I when I do features for somebody for free, it's because I respect who you are and I respect your artistry. That's how I want it. I, I used to tell myself if I can't get an artist for free, then I need to keep working. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, I know if you if you really on your shit, like the artist gonna fuck with you. Like Jay Z do only free verses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, but you gotta get to the level. You know what I'm saying? You exactly. gotta get to that. He ain't gonna charge you for no verse. But if you get to the level to where, so if you're an artist, you wanna earn that. So that's how I always looked at it. So, when, but I, I do know it's a difference. Like it's one thing to get somebody on your verse. It's another thing for them to do the verse and come do the video. Video, yeah. That's a whole nother thing. That's a whole, <laughs> so when when it's like Diddy, when, oh, so Diddy that did that video. So I went, is it the work ethic you believe that they have to push up and then get that feature, or should they buy into it, or what's the hustle? I mean, it really ain't a hustle. It's about being hot. If you hot, then you know you get favorable. But okay. if you're not. <laughs> Then you know, price the come. favors are turning to a price tag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, that's just what it is. Really, it's like a, a major artist to see a person that's hiding in that region. Of course, they're not going to charge me. They're going to want that support so they can build their fan base even more stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, what, yeah. It, that's what it, it's really about. And it's crazy because you see all these things. Like I said, Silk say Jay never charged him. Everybody stayed in the city that they was at because it was, it, was, it was the last day of the tour. So everybody partying, having fun. Jay go back and finish the song up and sent it to me. So you must have got a suit like three o'clock in the morning. I got it that morning and I made my time to edit it. You know what I'm saying? And some, and he killed it. He was, I was like, this is crazy. And I didn't think he was gonna make it because he was on tour. And so he um, he sent it and I was like, I was like, oh man, you killed it, right? I was like, how much I owe you? And he was like, nothing. Wow. And, I, and then I was, I, was, I think or he was going for a hundred thousand easily. And he was like, nah, I don't worry about it. Just next time, you know, look out for me. And I was mm -hmm. like, so I did something for him later on, not music wise, but just some, some real, real real, yeah, real. Pretty sure it's a lot of stories out there where people was like, dang, he jumped on this from Pharrell to any of those guys. Yeah. When somebody's hot, they just come in the city yeah. and they do it like a trade off. Exactly. Pretty much. And that's what it is. But when you cool off, you know, get that. Yeah, pressure, get that same right? low. Oh, no. What about people who big? I've seen this too, and I've only been in this a little while. I've seen people, I've heard of things like this. Uh, artists is hot. Next thing you know, they're not hot no more. But then the person that, w when they was hot, the other person had reached out to them. And now that they coming down off their hotness, that person like, ah, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm you, you get you get excluded off of that roller decks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, you know it what I'm saying? Is. So it's like artists need to pay attention. It's nothing personal. Some people take it personal. But really, when you look at Chris Brown, other people like that, Usher, you know, they use and they see the markets and they play the market. You know what I mean? Chris Brown grabs everybody that's hot in Dallas. And he's either going to do a show with them or they're on a tour and with him. And he's playing the market. He's going to play the market continuously. Drake is real precise about that too yeah so you got to really pay attention to the market in order to keep your longevity and a lot of people don't understand that dynamic of the game that's real relationships yeah so if you meet a person because i've learned in podcasting right i like 
organic, like me and your relationship. Mm -hmm. I pick up the phone, call you. I know it's genuine. It's nothing, no strings attached. We just right. cool. We met up like this. Just some brothers who understand, hey, man, okay, yeah, you this, okay. And you give me a shot, I give you a shot, and we give each other a shot at friendship yeah. and relationship building. And it's imp how important is it to go in the right way? It's very important because if you don't go in the right way, then it don't last. That's right. You know, I've had arguments with some of the artists that I'm extremely close with. And I shared it with them that if this relationship that you have is not organic, it's only monetary. So if you fail or you don't meet that marker, then when it's all over and the dust settles, the phone numbers are going to change. The access is going to change. There's not going to be no let's go in the studio and vibe. None of that. You know what I mean? Because you're not an asset to them anymore. So you have to be real careful how you form relationships and how you render yourself to people expecting them to render themselves the same way you're doing that. It. It's not going to work that way. Wow. I, I Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was waiting on it. No, I wanted to ask you, because the last time when you were on the show, you were talking about the release. You hadn't put out your instrumental album mm -hmm. at that time yet, but I know it's out now. Yes. How is it going? It's going really good. And I guess I could just say this on y'all show first. Yes, sir. My idea with that I wanted to put it out to see how, how it was doing. It's doing good. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to disclose that my idea for these instrumental albums is to give people a chance to rap on my music. So if you want to rap on those tracks, all you have to do is go to iTunes and pay for the track. It's going to be $1.99. Pay for it. Show proof of payment, and you can use the track. It's mm. non-exclusive, and that's all you have to do. Wow. And I'm going to be doing this, doing uh, two albums a month. So it'd be, oh, that's dope. It'd be like 20 tracks a month mm -hmm. that people get to pick from and go to iTunes. And if they want to put a record out with one of the tracks, they can do it. That's cool. I like that yeah. idea. Yeah. That's well, dope. you know, you, you got to understand, man, um, you, you, you don't understand how God is using you sometimes when you, you got to be in the spirit to understand. And I don't know, you know, a lot of people trip off me because I'm real spiritual. Yeah. I, I love God. I don't try to hide it. You got to take accept me like that. You can call me a hypocrite later. I don't care, but I'm going to show that I'll never deny him in, in front of nobody. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> and you grew up young dealing yeah. with, you know, understanding the path that your parents and everybody was on. My, my Aunt Hattie, you know, you've seen these people that really meant a lot to you, really, you know, loving and living life for God. You know what I mean? Right. And I look at you and I thank God for you because I look at you and you went through the, you know, Nip Nipsey Hussle, he passed away. You were recording with him when he passes away. Pimp C, the same thing. You had the opportunity to work with him. And I'm probably missing somebody. I don't yeah, even know. Big Hawk. Big Hawk. You know yeah, I, mean? I recorded him. He was, I was the last person to be in the studio with him before he passed away. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.